Hello and welcome to part two in my how to draw a dog in coloured pencil series. In part one we went through how to draw the eyes so if you haven't seen that yet I'll leave a link to it down below and in this video we'll be going over how to draw the nose. So as with last time I'll leave a link to all of the materials that I'm using down below and that includes the reference photo and the line drawing. So without further ado let's just get started. So the first colour that I'll be using in this tutorial is dark sepia Faber-Castell and I'm just going to use it to pick out the darkest bits in the nose. Um, I always do this on any part of uh, the face, just I think it, it creates a nice outline and a basis to start with, otherwise you end up smudging the pencil lines or not being able to see where you're putting your colours. So. And just start at the bottom. Thank you for all the lovely comments and the um, reaction to my last video as well. I've actually passed 200 subscribers since I put that up, so thank you to everyone that subscribed. It means a lot to me. Just going to go up the middle here a little bit. Along this bit, I am using mostly Faber Castell polychromos in this video. However, I think I have picked out a few Caran d'Ache luminance shades just because. There's like a purpley tone up here that is hard to capture with a, a polychromos. They don't really have that shade, so I have tried to make it as straightforward as possible, but you might have to order a few of those if you don't have them. And then I'm just gonna do this bit as well. This is a really nice reference picture. You can literally see all of the colours that are in it. So it's nice and bright and it's very clear compared to some reference photos that I use for my pet portraits that can be quite dark. So hopefully this will be useful to you. I'm just going to go a bit round here as well. And I think I'm just going to do a few little like lines, not too much of like a straight line, but just tiny little strokes just around the side here. Okay, right, I'm just going to now rub out the pencil lines. So it's nice and clean and ready for the base colour. Just going to put a bit more of that here so we don't lose it. Right. There we go. So the base colour that I'm going to use for the nose is this one. 
beige red. Um, it did used to be called Light Flesh, but they have changed the name since. So you might have Light Flesh or you might have Beige Red, but it's number 132. And I'm just going to do just a layer of that over the notes. I'm not pressing on too hard or too light, just enough to get a nice even colour. Adding the base coat just smooths it out nicely. Otherwise, you, the paper feels quite grainy and the colour doesn't go on very nice, especially if it's a dark colour. I hope that everybody's doing okay wherever you are in the world. In the UK we're in a lockdown, so I found a lot of time to start doing things like making TikToks and making reels on Instagram. So I'm just trying to keep busy really. I hope you're all okay. Um, I'll leave a, a link to my TikTok down below. I've not really done much on it yet. I've done like a few little videos, but I'll leave a link to all my social media down below. Um, just for this bit, I'm not gonna press on as hard. I'm gonna leave it quite pale just because there is more of a highlight on this bit. So I'm leaving that like really faint. And then this bottom bit. I'm also gonna leave this bit here. So I'll leave that quite white. I don't tend to use like white gel pens or white um, pencils or anything to pick out the white colours. I just like to leave the area white, if that makes sense, and use it as like negative space. So now that that base coat's down, I'm going to start with the first layer of detail and I'm going to use, um, I, I am going to use a luminance pencil, I'm going to use Burn Ochre 50%. I love this colour. There isn't a colour like this in the polychromos so I wish there were because it makes things a lot more simple. Um, they are a slightly different texture to the polychromos so don't press on as hard because they can go really opaque, they're really creamy and they layer up quite easily so I'm just going to start on this bit here and when I do the dog's nose to get that texture instead of shading like this I do like little circles just really small tiny little circles and it gradually builds up a texture So I'm just going to leave that bit quite light there and start working it down here.
just kind of focusing it around the edges of the nose, like around this bit, around this bit. I hope that these tutorials are really straightforward to follow. I'm one of those people that I don't like to overcomplicate things, so if anything doesn't make sense, please let me know. <laughs> It's all about just really gradually building building up the shadowing and the, the detail. That's how you get that really natural looking texture. I'm just gonna go over that bit there because it's gonna be really dark anyway. I've been working on um, a lot of cat commissions recently, so it's quite nice to draw a dog. I'd be interested to know if you prefer drawing dogs or cats. I think I like drawing dogs better just because I find cats a lot harder. There's just so many whiskers and they've got really um, particular patterns that you need to follow. And if you don't get it, bob on like perfect then it's gonna look a bit off so i do find that with dogs i can sort of chill out a bit <laughs> they don't need to be as perfect i think labradors are one of my favorite breeds to draw as well and i really like drawing spaniels Still like a lot of breeds that I haven't done yet. Like so many. I'd love to draw like a a husky or something. Just going really lightly over this bit. I'm going to start bringing it down here. I think I'm getting more used to talking to a camera as well. I, did that, I found that so weird at first, like I could not get my head around it. But I'm slightly getting more used to it. Well, especially because I've not actually been out and spoke to anybody in so long. I don't know if anybody else finds that, that like forgetting how to socialise. <laughs> Even when I go to the shops and stuff, I just completely forget how to be a human being. And I don't know. I just feel like I'm becoming a bit of a hermit now. <laughs> right, pretty happy with that so far. Um, next I'm going to Add a bit of a brown colour, I think. 
yeah. I'm gonna use nougat or nougat, and I never know how to pronounce it from the polychromos, and I'm just gonna start doing the exact same little swirly movement and focus it on this bottom bit here because it is very brown. And I'm just going to start bringing it around these bits as well, around the nostril. I think that um, a lot more people have been struggling this lockdown. I think because it's so miserable outside and it's just not a lot to do, is there really? I think a lot of people have started taking up drawing and stuff. It's a good distraction. Definitely been doing a lot more than I would be doing if things were normal. Just outlining this bit here, just to get a crisp line. Now I'm pressing on a little bit harder just because it is a bit dark here. And here as well. I'd love to um, make a Patreon one day and have like different tiers and more in-depth tutorials and stuff like that. That is definitely a goal for the future. Let me know what other kinds of animals you'd like to see a tutorial on. Obviously I'll be finishing this series but after this let me know what you'd like to see. I'm always open to suggestions and stuff whether it's pets or wildlife or anything really. I don't really like drawing people. I used to draw people a lot when I was at uni but I realised as soon as I started drawing pets that um, I enjoyed it way more. 
Just something I love about drawing animals. I'm a massive animal lover. I've got three cats and I'm dying for a dog. I want a dog so bad. Right, looking good. I think I'm gonna just go over some of the darker bits with dark sepia again, just to get a bit more definition back right down the middle here. I'm gonna press on quite hard. And I'm going to add in that little line there. So blending it up with those little swirly motions again. I might do um, a comparison video as well of the the polychromos versus luminance. Because when I first started out, I had no idea what, what the difference was and which ones were the best to use and what they were like. So I might do a little video on that. Just show some comparisons between the two, which I like better. So yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in that. Just uh, adding some depth to the, the nostrils. Using those little circling motions again. Same with this one. I'm just going to draw in this little like shadow here. And I'm just going to add a bit more pink there. And then a bit more, a bit more of this one. I am going to darken that bit up with a bit of caput, caput mortem. I never know how to pronounce any of these names. Caput mortem. Number 169, anyway. And I'm just going to darken this bit up a little bit. That bit there. And then I am just going to... Going to use some dark sepia on this bit around here. Little circle motions again. Not pressing on too hard. Just 
Just doing some of those tiny little strokes again. And I'm just going to do some strokes coming this way because you can see some of the fur start to take form there. Right. Now I'm going to use Cold Grey 2 uh, Polychromos and I'm just going to put a tiny bit here. Concentrating it around the edge. Like that. And then I'm going to use a warm grey, warm grey five, warm grey V, uh, number 274. And I'm just going to start putting in some little hair strokes. And same again at this side. Doing that little upward motions to try and blend it together. And I'm just going to use dark sepia again and just darken up some of those edges a bit more I think I said it last time in the other tutorial part one but it's always better to add a little bit at a time and gradually darken it up with every layer rather than do it really dark initially and then be like, oh, I wish I'd have done that a bit lighter. I just had a bit of detail in here, some little like squiggly lines. Had a bit more texture. Doing that little like like circular movements, but not all joined together like I was before. Just little little like semicircle flicks. There we go. Um, now I'm going to use this is another luminance that I'm going to have to use. It's a sepia 10% and it's like a really nice, like muted, 
purpley grey colour and I'm just going to start using it at the top of the nose up here and I'm just going to do tiny little hair strokes coming up from the nose just following the direction of the hair strokes in the picture Tiny, tiny little strokes with the pencil. Just gonna rub that pencil line. Like that. So now I think I am gonna go and darken that up a little bit again with dark sepia. Just to add a bit more dimension and depth. Oh yeah, that's looking a lot better. There we go, and then now I'm going to move on to this bit here, and I'm going to use I'm going to use cold grey one, and I'm just going to rub out those lines there. I'm just going to use cold grey one as a base layer, I'm pressing on relatively hard get a nice smooth colour. I'm just going to go over this little section here. And same again on the other side. I always work in like teeny tiny sections because I like to make sure that section looks really good before I move on to the next bit. And it, make, it makes it less overwhelming as well when you just do like a tiny bit at once. So now we're going to start adding a little bit of detail and I'm going to use going to use warm grey, warm grey V again and I'm just going to start adding in some tiny little grey strokes and I'm doing this kind of like little triangle shape when I do the strokes so it's like one, one, let's put my phone on silent. Sorry about that. 
So just kind of like coming out like that. And I'm gonna just start doing it down around the mouth. Always following the direction that it goes in. I like to try and leave some bits really light just because then it picks out a bit more of a highlight and adds a bit more dimension. So I'll leave little gaps in between, in between. That makes sense. And this just goes in this direction. Sometimes if there is a bit that's just like all grey, I will just shade it in because it's a bit quicker. Not everything has to be like a little hair stroke, you can just shade it in. It saves a lot of time. Kind of doing like little triangle shapes here. And again, here I am just leaving some little sort of triangular shapes blank just because there are a few lighter hairs there. Right, that'll do for now. And then I'm just going to darken it up with dark sepia. As I have with the rest of it. It's the perfect sort of dark shade just to pick out the details. You want to make sure the pencil's really sharp for this bit. sharpen it a little bit. I'll leave the sharpener that I used down below as well. It gives a really really sharp point.
sometimes I go like this direction, sometimes I go back up. Just alternate the strokes that you're doing so it looks natural. There we go. And now this side. I love drawing these bits, I find it really satisfying. It always looks like way more complicated than it actually is. Well, saying that, I don't know, it might not be com it might be complicated, but I don't know. Once you get the hang of it, it's definitely um, not too difficult. Okay, so now I'm going to put down a base layer of ivory just here next to that bit we've just done to start connecting those bits together. And I'm just going to, while I can still see these pencil marks, mapping with warm grey V, just mapping where those bits will go, just so I don't lose them. There we go, so now I can rub them out a little bit. And I'm just going to use um, Caran Dash Luminance Brown Ochre 10%. Um, we used Burnt Ochre for the eyes up here, but this bit isn't quite as orange, so I'm just going to use that to add a few little hair strokes. Might end up using a little bit of burnt ochre as well. Just to add a bit more detail. And then I'm gonna use mm. I'm gonna use a little bit of nougat. Start adding a bit more detail. I'm going to sharpen it a little bit. Just like gradually blend it into that darker bit there.
then I'm just gonna rub this bit out and I'm gonna use the ivory again as a base layer all the way around the top. I'm going to use some of that um, brown orca 10% again. Just do some little strokes up here. Kind of like leaving this bit quite light. Then I'm just going to use nougat again and start darkening up this bit here. I think I probably will add a bit of burnt ochre, it needs a bit of more warmth. I'm going to use burnt ochre and I'm just going to add a little bit in this dark patch of fur. And a tiny bit it's around here. Let's blend it all together. Now I'm just going to start around this bit, just a little bit of ivory around the outside of that nose. And then a bit of just that out. a tiny bit of cold grey one just around here to link it all up, connect it. And I'm just going to use a bit of this brown ochre. Do some little strokes. Not too many, just a bit there. And 
going to use some nougat again. Just some little strokes around here. Then I'm just going to rub out these little whiskers a little bit. And I'm just going to extend that cold grey one. And then I'm just going to use ivory, just leaving that there very faintly so I can see it a little bit. And I'm just going to add that to the edge. There we go. And I'm just going to carry on with that warm gravy again, just adding more to these hairs. And I'm going to use nougat again, just add a bit of brown. Then I'm actually going to use burnt orca. You got that tiny line. And I'm going to start doing some little strokes on this bit. Really, really light strokes. And then I'm going to use nougat again, and I'm just going to add some darker strokes here to create that shadowing in between the ear. The, the side of the face. A tiny bit here as well. Kind of like leave a gap where those little whiskers would go. So we'll draw them in later and then I'm just gonna add a bit more nougat there and then I think I'll just finish off this little bit here so that the video doesn't get too long so cold grey one again 
We'll look at this bit. This base layer. Sort of like connecting all this bit. Just drawing over those little marks that I made earlier. Ivory. And I'm just going to use a warm grey V again. Carry on doing some little strokes. There are a few quite long little whiskers here, so just leaving some spaces free for those. Going around them. I'm just going to sharpen it a little bit. That always happens. Now it's super sharp and you can get those details, the tiny little hairs. Sort of doing a few strokes, sort of going back on herself to create that fur direction. And then I'll just do a few more up here. Kind of getting a bit sparser now up here to blend it out. And I'm going to use nougat again with some brown. A bit more around here, a bit darker. Sort of going in different directions. A few around the bottom. And I think a few more. Um, just going to use a tiny bit more burnt ochre I think around oh that's not burnt ochre around here leaving those little gaps for whiskers Starting to look better now, I think. I'm just going to start adding a few little first shorts around here as well.
There we go, that's starting to take shape a lot more now. I think I'm going to just use a bit more nougat to sort of blend these little hairs out. Right. I could honestly just go on and on and on, but I might stop soon. I think I'll just add a tiny bit more just to round it off a bit around here. A bit of ivory. And a bit of Burns Orca. Concentrate it around here. nougat just concentrating it in this sort of line down here and here and I am just gonna I'm not quite happy with how dark these bits are yet dark these bits are I'm going to use a tiny bit of dark sepia, just a bit more depth. Again, around these bits. That's starting to look a lot better. I might add a bit of black as well just to add a bit more depth. See how it goes with this. More on this side, I think. Oh my gosh, it's getting dark already, and it's only half four. I cannot wait for spring. really thin ones there to blend it out. I'm just going to add a bit, a bit more depth here as well.
in a bit more here. So if I just spend all day like constantly darkening it and adding more. I'm always wondering like how far do you go with it? I think we're not too far off now. And a bit more there. Refine those whiskers a little bit. that is starting to look pretty good now. A few more random little hairs around here. And I'm just going to use black now. Just on these bits. I do like to leave black till last because it can get a bit smudgy. You can end up smudging the work that you've already done. Doing those little circles again. Pressing on quite hard. Just blend that together. Okay. I think that is looking pretty good so I think I'll leave it there for now but next time I think we will do all the fur around the face here just to start connecting it all together so that it's starting to look a bit more like a dog so yeah thank you very much for watching and um, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it helps out so much and please subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next part in this series and yeah i hope that you enjoyed it thank you very much mm -hmm.